<laughs> That's wild. I'm on Locust Street in Yankton, South Dakota. The house behind me was built in the early 1900s, but there's a map from 1875 that shows an early structure here. I got permission to excavate the backyard in search of artifacts, and it's possible we'll find artifacts from both this house and the earlier structure. We'll see how it goes. This is a classic turn of the century style house. It could have actually been made by Sears and Roebuck. And the backyard is wide. I believe it's a double wide lot. 100 feet in length. There's a good amount of ground to cover back here. There is a cement slab and a garage, but we'll get out a grid and start probing. This is a big pit. I'm thinking five feet by five feet. I pushed a probe rod through the ground and felt some objects, possibly some stove ashes. We'll get this thing opened up. cable line. I always say make sure you call and locate before you dig. This is fine, but shovel could easily cut through it. Down here we've got all kinds of pieces exposed. Looks like we're dealing with a circa 1910 site. There's a looks like an early machine made ketchup bottle. Uh, I see a company name. Okay, it's made by the H.J. Heinz company. That's the same company still producing condiments today. Uh, let's see, this one's about ready. Another uh, machine made piece, a uh, ball neck panel style. I believe it's an extract of some sort. And an ink bottle, Carter's. It's a uh, Carter's ink that was a very popular ink product back in the day. What's going on with this? Looks like some kind of cold cream container. There's all kind of writing on the bottom. Imperial cheese. What's this say? McLaren's Imperial cheese. I'd never dug one of these before. I wonder if it's some kind of cottage cheese product. It's a uh, pressed glass. I'm guessing this is another one. Huh. Royal Lunch and Cheese. Yeah, it might be a different company. Yeah, Royal Lunch and Cheese. It's the same age as the other one, early machine made. Looks like maybe some kind of big preserve jar. It's got a paneled base, not a soda. <laughs> it's a decanter. So the top's broken off. These would have been refilled. So they likely broke it and discarded it. This would have sat on a dresser or a bar and held brandy or some kind of spirits. Oh, it's like a mason jar lid insert. Uh, what kind of company? Oh yeah, Boyd's. Yeah, porcelain lined. I believe they were the biggest manufacturer of these mason jar lids at the time. Some kind of a preserve jar would have had a bale top on it. Would have held some kind of uh, condiment or food product of some sort. All right, that's an earlier style ball jar. It's a dropped a tr dropped a double loop. 
Ball Perfect Mason. Uh, this dates back to about 1905. see here okay a tooled top there we go uh, looks like a maybe apothecary type thing maybe a, a toiletry we've got all kinds of pieces down here this one no doubt caught my eye it looks like a modern piece but it's actually enamel wear now these came in all different kinds of patterns it's a I got a really nice look to it. It's a cooking pot of some sort. Looks like we have a beer or mason jar. Yeah, mason jar. It's a ball uh, dropped a double loop. Ball mason jar. It's a classic looking one there. Uh, some kind of a preserved jar. Oh wait, no, another mason jar. Oh wow, okay, so this is a generic one. It just says mason on it. It's a uh, circa 1905, I suppose. Huh, looks like it could be uh, some kind of dressing bottle. I'm not seeing any embossing on it. And yeah, nothing, it would have had a paper label, but it has a ground lip. So that's a little earlier, it could be closer to 1900. Oh, this amber thing, I don't know if it's a bitters. Huh. Classic, uh, Duffy's malt whiskey. They usually have a patent date on bottom. Uh, August 1880, 1886. That's a beautiful honey amber color. And it's got a lot going on, I like the monogram. things ready to fall out Let's see here what do we got going here WB manufacturing company uh, no other embossing looks like some kind of machine made cold cream container oh, this one could be interesting let's see what we got going on here this is wild so it's machine made. Okay. Barrett and Companies, yet Virginia Dare. Norfolk, Virginia. It's a wine bottle. These may have been used during Prohibition. You can see there's just all kinds of writing going on there. A newer piece in comparison to what I usually dig. Filled with groundwater. Looks like a turn mold wine. Yeah, it could have been used for cooking uh, in a different color than they usually are. This has a partial label. Looks like it could be uh, some kind of apothecary piece, some kind of pharmaceutical bottle. It's a tooled top. I'd put this one at about 1905. Oh, that's cool. A little uh, brass, maybe dinner bell of some sort. Looks like uh, some pieces are missing though. We're down almost six feet in the ground and we finally got into a use layer. We had some undigested seeds and you can see there's some pieces sticking out here. Looks like a tooled top, uh, reinforced lip, a pharmaceutical bottle made by the Whittle Tatum Company. Huh, some kind of medicine or extract. E.W. Gillette and Company, LTD, Chicago, Illinois. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. It's one of these with the uh, owl and the moon on it. It's a Gillette extract bottle. Oh, and another one, let's see. Some kind of a perfume, that's a tooled top. These are always a really heavy glass. Looks 
It's like a beer bottle, a tooled top, made by William Franzen and Son of Milwaukee. So this, let's see, that's really nice. Wow, that's some kind of English transfer ware. Looks like a cathedral is on it. It's got some iron leaves as well. Sometimes these have markings. All I see is Abbey on it. It's a looks like a double stamp, so it's hard to read. What kind of canning jar filled with groundwater, I hope. Uh, Swayze's improved mason. It, uh, doesn't have a ground lip. I'd put this at about 1905. Well, what's going on with this? J.R. Watkins. J.R. Watkins Medical Company, Winona, Minnesota. This was likely some kind of ointment. It's a machine made threaded top piece. see this. Oh, that's nice as well. I've got a flow blue, I believe they call this. Sometimes, yeah, oh, there's a maker's mark. Uh, Monmouth Semi-Porcelain, New Wharf Pottery, England. There's a CP on that, must be the potter's initials. And then if you see on the rim here, they call it flow blue because when the pattern was transferred on, the color ran off, appearing that it's flowing off of it. Uh, this is an older style. It's a Blake style prescription bottle. Uh, it's a light aqua color. Uh, could be pre-1900 on this one. Another prescription bottle. This one's got a rounded lip. It's a, again, circa 1905 tooled top. Now this thing, let's see. Wow, oh, that's a big one. It's a pickled goods container. Got some markings, Heinz. Heinz number 16, patented April, April 4th, 1882. So that's just the patent now. I'm sure they used that style for many years later, but it is a tooled top. This use layer is packed. I don't even know where to start. I guess on the edge over here. Looks like some kind of a beer. It's a tooled crown top made by the Streeter Bottle and Glass Company. That's Streeter, Illinois. Oh, wow. Well, an Olympia flask that patented in 1898. It has an 1898 patent on bottom. All kinds of ceramic dinnerware pieces, an insane amount. This is a yeah, it's circa 1900 piece, typical floral pattern. That looks like a Blake style prescription bottle. Uh, it's got a mark on the bottom, but it's faded. That's early, I'd put this at 1900, maybe a bit earlier. Okay. Yeah, Souter's Elegant Flavoring Extracts. Royal Remedy and Extract Company, Dayton, Ohio. That's a tooled top. These ones are cool to find. They have a lot going on, a lot of embossing. Huh. We got some groundwater coming out of that one. And Look at that, two uh, 
intact cuffs. These have the horseshoe on bottom. Uh, that was a really uh, classic pattern back in the day. These may have actually started out as jelly tumblers, or uh, may have held cottage cheese, and they turned them into drinking glasses later on. This one's... <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, look at that. A little uh, bisque porcelain doll head. This one's uh, likely German made. Most of them were made in Germany during that time period. Oh, this pit's just loaded. Oh, okay, some kind of a pickled goods preserve container filled with groundwater, mud. <laughs> No embossing though, likely held out some kind of capers, pickles, something along those lines. And another. Yeah, no embossing on this one either. Broken lamp chimney. That's wild. That's a chamber pot lid. Looks like it has some kind of a sponge pattern on it or something. Uh, these usually don't have any markings on the lids, but the bases do. Hopefully we'll find the base down here somewhere. Oh wow, another little uh, jelly tumbler. This one has a a gold pattern on it. It could actually be 24 karat gold leaf that was common in manufacturing during the day. The things we get ourselves into, I'm almost 10 feet down. Note the ground around here is incredibly stable. There wasn't even bracing when this pit was originally open, but I've still been pulling pieces up. I've got a ton down here. A solid use layer. Awesome. Look at that. This looks mint. It's a Mason's patent jar. A ground lip patented November 30th, 1858. This is late 1800s. Looks like a prescription bottle. No embossing. Rounded lip circa 1905. I've got a couple here. Uh, Sheldon. Sheldon style. Prescription bottle circa 1905. And another prescription bottle made by the Western Bottle Manufacturing Company has WBM Company embossed on bottom. Another prescription bottle. Uh, Philadelphia Oval Style, getting earlier, has an H embossed on bottom, still has some contents inside. Looks like an Ironstone China coffee cup. Has a little design to it on the bottom. Uh, again, turn of the century, circa 1900. And another one has a little different style. This one, you can see the handle's broken off. That's likely why they discarded it. An extract bottle. It's got a tooled top. No other embossing on it. It's a ball neck panel style. Uh, 
another prescription bottle. It's a Sheldon style. Again, circa 1905. A mason's patent jar with the hero cross. I can see the top was chipped. That's likely why this one was discarded. It couldn't seal anymore. <laughs> wow, that's a big comb. It's a uh, one of those early unbreakable things. Uh, some kind of early rubber, I suppose, maybe related to Goodyear, the Goodyear company. A possible jelly tumblers here. Found a lot of kitchen related items. Yeah, this is another one of those with the uh, horseshoe on the bottom. Again, it would have held some kind of jelly, jam, cottage cheese. Okay. Oh, wow. It's a broken mason jar, but that's a Ball Mason's patent. You'll see that 1858. That's not the year it was made, that's just the patent date. This is likely from the 1880s or 90s. I think this might be an old cap gun. Uh, I know back in the day the cap guns were made to resemble real guns. It could actually be a real one. It's so rusted. Uh, see the barrel chamber right there. All kinds of metal stuff. I think this is a cast iron uh, safe bank. It was a piggy bank made to look like a safe. I've dug a few of these over the years, so I'm fairly certain that's what it is. Some more metal. Uh, I'm guessing all this was dropped down around the same time. Just a chain of some sort. I don't know, if used to chain up a dog or something, who knows. We're down almost 12 feet. It's actually getting a little dark down here. We're a couple feet off the bottom. There's uh, another layer here. Uh, looks like a few bottles. Some kind of a toiletry, I think. What's going on with this? Dr. Elgraves? Unequaled tooth powder, Chicago. That's a tooled top. I'd never seen one of these before. Oh, it's sketchy being down here. The ground is uh, hard packed though. Looks like we have a pickle bottle, preserve bottle of some sort, capers or pickles in it. And maybe the lip of a prescription drugstore bottle. Let's see. All right, a prescription bottle, Sheldon style. A Sheldon style prescription, uh, no drugstore uh, embossed in the glass. I'm finding just tons of little uh, dinnerware pieces. This is wild, look at that. That's a little teacup. I don't know if it was some kind of novelty tea set or maybe a child's tea set. It looks like a hand-painted flower on it though. see uh, all these undigested seeds. This is definitely an old outhouse pit. Let's see. Some kind of an extract. <laughs> JBL flavoring extracts. Logansport, Indiana. I'd never seen one of these either. Uh, looks like a tooled top of uh, ball neck panel style. Uh, a bunch of broken windows in this layer too. This one's kind of wedged in there. Wedged in with all the broken windows, I guess. Oh, okay. That's a, an applied crown top beer bottle. 
it's a turn mold so this is one of the earlier crown tops most folks know them as pry off caps this is a uh, i'd say right around 1900 1905 like a, another prescription bottle nothing home uh, I think we have a glass company on bottom made by the Western bottle manufacturing company they made a lot of these back in the day All right. looks like a cologne bottle of some sort has a what's it have on the bottom here Oh, WT and Company. So it was made by the Whittle Tatum Glass Company. And uh, it would have had a paper label and then that metal stopper that's clearly corroded. Oh, and another tooth powder. So uh, I don't know if this was the equivalent of toothpaste or something to prevent decay. Uh, it's good age though, yeah, that same 1900-1905 range. This is one of the deepest pits I've been in. This is insane. I've got uh, a few more bottles. I did find bottom. <sighs> we'll see how it goes. Uh, right on. I thought these were mason jar lids, but uh, it looks like it's the top and bottom to a cosmetic container, a matching set. Looks like some kind of, oh, PD and Company. So this is a pharmaceutical bottle from Park Davis and Company. They had a wide range of pharmaceutical products around the turn of the century. Big ink bottle, okay, from the Diamond Ink Company. That was another uh, major distributor during its time. And a lamp chimney. Looks like a machine made lamp chimney circa 1900. This pit's done. It's all finished up. This was something else. Got a good variety of pieces. Everything dated from about 1900 up to the World War I era. Got a above average amount of dinnerware, ornate dinnerware actually. Got some toiletry containers, some extracts, cold creams. Uh, below average amount of beers, wines, and liquor bottles. Seems the family wasn't consuming much alcohol. Got that lamp chimney, some uh, pickled goods containers, and a bunch of canning jars. I'd say an above average amount of those. Also got some prescription bottles, pharmaceutical bottles, some jelly jars. Well, there you have it. We'll get this thing filled back in.